In the design of a new petrochemical plant, a centrifugal pump was added to circulate the feedstock through a series of downstream equipment and including a heat exchanger, which was critical to the operation. The pump was selected based on the process requirements, its main specifications were made based on basic hydraulic calculations. Based on preliminary calculations, the pump shut-off pressure was considered with a 20% margin from the differential pressure, calculated to be 25 bar gauge. This led to a design pressure of the piping and instruments, and heat exchanger in the discharge system to be 25 bar gauge. The issue started when, when the procurement cycle of the pump started, the team received the pump's performance curves. The curves revealed an unexpected shut-off head. Based on the shut-off head, the actual pump shut-off pressure was found to be 28 bar gauge. A pump shut-off pressure here represents the actual pressure the discharge piping and instrumentation shall face when a valve is closed in the discharge line or due to any other blockage. This means that in this case, the discharge system should withstand 28 bar gauge. Now, based on the actual pump data, the pump shut-off pressure of 25 bar gauge previously estimated is no longer valid. So how shall this affect the discharge system? For piping and instruments, they already considered a 300 flange rating, which can already withstand the new 28 bar gauge shut-off pressure. But we can say real issue is with heat exchanger as the design pressure of the exchanger was only 25 bar gauge. The exchanger was mechanically designed to withstand only 25 bar gauge. Based on mechanical calculations of the exchanger, the maximum allowable working pressure was 26 bar gauge. This means that heat exchanger cannot withstand pump shut-off pressure in case a blockage occurred downstream the exchanger while the pump was still running. So now we are having a weak point at the pump discharge system. What shall we do? The first proposed solution was to add a safety interlock system. So when some blockage occurs and the pressure at the discharge reads a very high pressure, this shall trigger a signal from existing emergency shutdown system to stop the pump. However, this solution faced a significant hurdle. The case is that adding such a protection would need a very reliable shut-off system that has a very low probability of failure on demand. In any safety integrity level assessment, this would need safety integrity level 3 protection. Although safety integrity level 3 can be provided for pressure transmitters using a voting system, the real issue is that the existing emergency shutdown system was rated at safety integrity level 2. This means that the safety function cannot meet the safety integrity level criteria, which means that it is not a reliable protection. So what if we added a pressure relief valve as another safeguard in case tripping the pump at a high pressure failed? This would create a layered protection approach acceptable within the safety integrity level framework. However, this led to a new issue, which is related to the relief destination. Where shall the relieved fluid go? The high flow rate from the relief valve could not be accommodated by the existing vessel or the flare knockout drum, as neither was adequate for such capacity. This means that we shall need a new vessel to accommodate this load, which is too costly. What about the exchanger itself? As it seems that adding more layers of protection would be a very expensive solution, the engineering team started to consult the supplier of the heat exchanger. As fabrication of heat exchanger was not yet completed, the team reached out to the supplier to explore options for increasing the maximum allowable working pressure. The supplier offered modifications in the exchanger channel, which was the weakest point in the exchanger. After a cost-benefit analysis of the supplier's proposed modifications, it was determined that upgrading heat exchanger to handle the new shut-off pressure was the most cost-effective route. The cost was substantially lower than the implementation of overpressure protection involving a new vessel to receive the relief load in addition to pressure transmitters and a pressure relief system. Let's see the results. Once the modifications were completed, 
heat exchanger's maximum allowable working pressure was successfully increased to 30 bar gauge. This exceeded the pump's shut-off head pressure. The discharge system, including the exchanger, piping, and instruments, was fully rated to handle the maximum pressure, ensuring process safety and equipment integrity. This means that the whole system is now inherently safe and can withstand maximum pressure from the pump. So, what we can learn from that? Firstly, design pressure shouldn't be confirmed before receiving pump curves. Before receiving pump curves, the pump shut-off pressure is considered preliminary. The final say would be by the pump's supplier. So never use the preliminary value to purchase other equipment. Secondly, understanding safety integrity levels is highly crucial to ensure whether the system protection is adequate or not. Finally, proactive supplier engagement. Early and proactive engagement with suppliers can provide alternative solutions that may be more cost-effective than complex system modifications. Finally, the engineering team addressed an overpressure risk through a cost-effective solution that involved upgrading the heat exchanger to handle the pump's shut-off head pressure. This solution also maintained the project timeline and ensured that the discharge system met all safety requirements without the need for additional overpressure protection measures.